Hello again, Steve here with a few comments on another example as to why it's probably a good idea to get rid of in our minds the concept of ruling classes have any have, having any inherent authority over anybody but themselves, maybe. This thing is called the Sovereign Immunity Doctrine. Now, I know I've talked about before, gone on rambling about law and so on the little bits that I know but I just try to put things together in terms of whether they make sense or not and if we look at the word law in its origin it means fixed or laid down so fixed means it's it's like it can't be really changed like gravity doesn't care whether you agree with it or not whether you're somebody who thinks they're a king or somebody who thinks they're a pauper it doesn't really matter it is what it is and working things out through mathematics and science and so on are the same idea. I mean, whether something is either true or it's not, you know, when it gets right down to it. And to call something law and then to say, well, but that guy over there is exempt from it, is telling us that it's not law, right? It's just, it's dictatorship. It's, do as I do, not as I say. Now, sovereign immunity doctrine, just reading it off of Wikipedia article here, or crown immunity, is a legal doctrine by which the sovereign or state cannot commit a legal wrong. So, if somebody can commit it, so for that guy it's wrong, for that guy it's not wrong, right? Uh, that that one over there is called a king or a queen and has got an asshole and shits as well but there's no such thing as them doing wrong only that guy over there can do wrong right that's not law right it's not law by the by the origin of the word anyway so sovereign can do no legal wrong and is immune from civil suit or criminal prosecution immune they have immunity just like on that um, whatever the reality show was the principle is commonly expressed by the popular legal maxim, the maxim rather, rex non potest peccare, meaning the king can do no wrong. Imagine that, eh? Well, that's of course where gods come from, right? These concepts of kings. Like we, you know, man has made God in their own image, and they made man in their own image of God. Uh, king can do no wrong. King sits on a throne and dictates and it hasn't changed. It certainly hasn't changed in the mind of human beings. And more and more I'm coming to believe and certainly putting things together this is just the family structure. You know, it's the torments of the family structure. We leave home but we don't leave home. We just see the world as family, right? Because as children were very small we've been abused by our parents, most of us, because we've been told how to do some stuff and instructed without our permission. Just, this is what you got to do, you got to go to this school, you got to do this, you got to wash down, and so on. And there was these big, almighty people, called our parents, older siblings, what have you, caregivers, whatever, who told us what to do. We had to do it, but they didn't have to do it. That sovereign immunity. They were sovereign from what we could see, from what we could see. I remember when I was a kid, I used to think, oh my God, when I become an adult, I'll have my own freedom. That's how it's seen. So the kingdom is just a larger family. The king is just the, the guardian, the overlord, and makes up all kinds of rules for the underlings, just like parents make up all kinds of rules for the kids. And all kinds of punishments if they don't follow through with them, which is what these criminal and civil prosecutions are, just punishments for not, do, not obeying the king. But the king's not subject to them. So that's not really law, is it? It's not law in its original sense. And therefore, for us to move beyond the idea of legitimizing government. I think it's important to see these kinds of things. 
And I think it's important for our quality of life long term because we get to see the origins of ourselves and how it is that these ridiculous contradictions show up in our mind. It's because we were shown contradictory ethics from the time we were so young, right? Contradictory virtues from our supreme beings, from our big kings called our parents and caregivers and so on. They told us to obey. That was for us to obey was being virtuous. But it was exactly the opposite land for them. They didn't have to obey us. So it was, wasn't an equal relationship at all. That was not the expression. There was not two human beings going on there. There was master and slave, in a way. So I think for us to improve this for ourselves is first of all to recognize it. And secondly, to talk about it and do what we can to reduce childhood violence and childhood bullying and childhood subjugation to arbitrary dictates, which is what this is. If it's not universal, then it's arbitrary, right? Somebody's, somebody can do this, somebody can't do that, somebody, the person who can't do that, well, somebody else can do the same thing. Somebody can do this because they're immune, immune, they have immunity of the rules. Like children got to go bed at a certain time, but the parents didn't. So that's, and even if they didn't, there was no explanation as to why. Okay, if it was, it's important for you to go to bed now, because you, when you're growing up, your body needs to rest, it's got to build, it's growing very fast, you need more sleep than I do. I, as mommy or daddy, got to stay up for a bit because we've got to tidy up the kitchen and wash it all up and so on. Kids don't understand that. They get up in the morning and the kitchen's done. They can see things, you see. That isn't arbitrary dictate now because there's reasons for it. It's just do this, go to bed, get up, and so on. This is all what society is, right? All these different rules. Signs, signs everywhere. There's signs blocking out the scenery, like breaking my mind or whatever the song, eh? It's but all those signs and all those rules, the rulers don't have to follow through and therefore it's not law. It's just master-slave relationship. And the quicker we recognize that, the quicker it is we just notice the bullshit that's throughout. And it's like the big screens come off and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I get it, I see things. Is life any easier? Not really, but at least we're honest to, with ourselves. And to me, anyways, that helps to improve my quality of life in the long run. Because I get to say, well, hey, you know what? I'm being as honest as I can. Is everything I say truthful? No. Probably lots of it's bullshit. But it's the best thing. It's, it's the clearest I can see. So that's in terms of quality of life. That is helpful. Once again, great chatting. Just wanted to share a few words on sovereign immunity doctrine. I think it's important. It's an important thing for us to consider in terms of every time a politician or somebody opens their mouth and starts talking about freedom and the value of laws and all that sort of stuff. Just be aware that he or she may well be immunity, immune to some of the shit that he's actually talking about us, supposedly us, having to follow, and that makes no sense, it's not law, it's unjust, wouldn't you say? Hope to talk again soon.